Hi everybody and welcome to a new episode of Inspired Chats. I'm Carl, this is Sarah and this is Susan. So this week we have decided that we're going to talk about animals and in particular how animals help maintain and encourage positive mental health. So personally one of the things that I've noticed over the last six months as we've been going through Covid is the fact that I've not been on my own when I've been in lockdown. I've always had my little dog Paddy sat next to me, sniffing my feet and uh, wagging his tail as they do. And I often wonder how how my COVID experience might have been different had Paddy not been there. So, um, Susan, I know this is a topic close to your heart. Do you want to uh, share your wisdom? Well, um... Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. And I think a lot of people watching this will will also very much resonate with what you've just said there, Carl, because, um, you know, a, a dog is definitely man's best friend or woman's best friend for sure. And, um, and we have uh, two dogs, um, both were sort of rescue dogs. Um, um one is a husker moot he's he's quite a big dog he's sort of um german shepherd size uh very lovely temperament um doesn't doesn't speak much because he is um a husker mute so um um yeah he's uh, he's lovely and we have uh, also um, a little lady who joined us just before lockdown and I'm so glad that we that we decided to um, give her a home here because um, Sky Dog is 10 years old now and whilst he's reasonably active you wouldn't believe he was 10 um, we felt this was a good time to maybe you know consider he wasn't too old you know to bring another dog in uh, into the family because um, no, we felt it was the right time to, um, and she just happened to come upon our radar. And um, she's uh, she's crazy, <laughs> but she's adorable, <laughs> and that's what they do, isn't it? You know, you just um, you always make allowances for them as long as they know their place. <laughs> So that's the situation in, in our household at the moment. <laughs> it's funny when you're feeling down or you've had a tough day or you think there might be some money worries or there might be a deadline you've got to get done for work or some, and it could be anything. And you're having a bit of a downer and you sat on the sofa and they just come and just jump on you and <laughs> put the head on you. And all of a sudden, it don't matter what the problem is, you're just feeling good again. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they're so, so good in the start? moment, aren't they? <laughs> uh, well, I'm in a situation at the moment where, so I was always brought up with cats because my mum was frightened to death of dogs because she'd been bitten uh, when she was uh, younger. Uh, a lot of people have fears about dogs and cats uh, for the same reasons. Maybe it's, you know, cats can still attack, <laughs> as yeah. do dogs. Um, but then, so I was brought up with uh, big fluffy ginger half Persians when I was a kid. And um, then when Chris and I got married, uh, because he's from a dog family, we had a dog and we had a, a Vimarana called Safi, who we had for 14 years. And I, oh, I, we loved her. We practiced on her for the first, like our first child, <laughs> if you like, because we moved in together and we thought, let's have a dog. You know, I'm a loud one. Now my mum's not here. Um, and she was just the bee's knees. And then we had kids and she'd heard them. She had like this herding instinct. And she was just so gentle. And we lost her, hmm, I think it'd be three years ago now, might be four years ago now. And she's left a bit of a void. Um, my son's tried to fill it with a hamster. He, we allowed him to have a hamster during lockdown to help him. Um, and he's bought one in a very similar colour to Safi, who was a Vimarana. They're quite minky coloured Vimaranas, if you, if you know them. And he's called it Waffle Bob, okay? And it's a big fluffy thing. It's beautiful. Um, 
and he's lovely but he's, he's not a dog <laughs> and I was just saying earlier that um, I was looking at the dogs trust and there was um, a Vimarana in up in the Liverpool area um, and he was seven months old and his name is Sam and he needs a home and I shoved it in front of my husband's face and he was like <gasps> but we probably wouldn't have the same breed again because it's too upsetting so we were looking at a different breed but just looking at the face I was like oh my gosh because you're right they have they are so part of the family aren't they and they're so nurturing and they're stress relieving and I think you know we're supposed to be a nation of animal lovers aren't we and um yeah I couldn't agree more I, I love them to death and I have we have that void um so hopefully we can fill it soon yeah I share your sentiments entirely about dogs um one thing I don't get is cats um I'm going to be controversial here because I know people are quite passionate and I understand if somebody's passionate about a particular animal but I don't get it. The only cat that I've ever known is my mum's cat, and if you went near it, it would bite you. Cats, you see, you own a dog, a cat owns you, okay? So when I was a kid, that's what I remembered. The cat is in, all the cats are in charge. <laughs> yeah, cats have masters, I think is the saying, isn't it? Dogs have, yeah. no, no, no. Dogs have masters, cats have servants. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> and my mum always liked to ginger. I don't know why she said they got more personality but I know that my nan or my auntie one of them they had a Siamese and it used to sit on the top I was very small it used to sit on the top of the door and it would jump on you and hiss at you. <laughs> and it was it was you know it's like a guard dog and it was really quite frightening <laughs> so some cats can be but then some breeds of dog can be it depends on the breed and how it's looked after but yeah, Siamese have got a bit of a, a reputation. I mean, Disney's done that, haven't they, with those two Siamese cats? Do you remember? Yes. <laughs> On the Aristocats. So, yeah, so personally, I've had really nice experience with cats, apart from that, you know, Siamese. <laughs> yeah. Do you not have cats scar. then, guys? <laughs> scar from, from a, a cat when I was a kid, and um, it was probably my fault, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> playing with it in a way that was uh, unacceptable to the cat so it uh, gave me what for <laughs> they've definitely got smaller personal space haven't they <laughs> their buffer zones are a lot smaller you can't go into their space it's hilarious yeah. have you ever had a cat then Carl? my mum my had cats uh, my mum had three actually um and when I had my first marriage, um, we had a cat and his name was Ozzy and he was a blue Russian. I remember that much. Oh, yeah. And he, he was completely placid and lovely. And he, he came to live with me for a while, um, but I just didn't bond with him. It, it, I just didn't bond with him and I think he's still going now. He must be 17 or 18 because um, my ex-mother-in-law has him and he's, he's a proper old man. Um, so mm. I think he's longer than others, can't they? <laughs> yeah, I think he's still going. But I mean, Paddy, when we, when we got Paddy, he was um, really, really scared. He, you know these videos that you get of um, neglected animals? Um, he was like that. He was covered from head to toe in mange. Um, he, he maybe had 25% of his fur. He, he was really poorly. In fact, one, one of our friends who had a key for our house come in the house and uh, screamed when she saw him. She thought it was like a zombie dog. It was it was really really poorly. Um, um, it must have taken two years at least to get him back to good health, and it cost us a lot of money as well. But it's like your kids; you, you just love them. Um, 
to to the end of the end of the earth and you'd do anything for him um and he he just pays us back with love um he he just he's always there he's he's never in a grump he's never he's never growled at any i can hear him scurrying around now um (laughs) he never he never growls never misbehaves and he's just a good little dog but he's he's getting quite old now when when you were saying about your dog getting to 10 we think paddy is around the age of 10 um Hmm. is is it's got to be a minimum of eight based on the time that we've had him um so it's got to be a minimum of eight but we think he's nearer 10 and we have spoke about getting another dog to give him some company um who knows who knows what the future holds mm. um, can live quite old i mean they said that you know when you have sometimes I, when it's mixed i don't know but sometimes when you have like pedigrees or whatever they told us that it would be 10 years old she was 14 do you know what i mean so it's all that love that you give them that makes them last longer. So yeah. age, it's like people, age is just a number. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's not a pedigree. It's, um, it's crossed with something and we don't know what. Um, we think it's possibly a lacerapso. All right. Um, mm. Because they're commonly bred together. Um, Did you get it from a shelter? Yeah, we got him from a shelter and then the shelter got shut down mm. for not looking after animals very well. Oh, there's, yeah. um, you know, lately, I don't see, on the, there's been a lot on the telly lately. Breaks my heart. You know, all the different animal charities. It's not just pets, but endangered species and donkeys. Oh my goodness, I sob at all of those. <laughs> okay. It breaks my heart to see animals like, you know, in, in danger or not being looked after and I do worry that people might have bought them over lockdown and for the wrong reasons and now they've all gone back to work and thought oh can't do this mm. I just wonder if that's happened or not I imagine there's a lot of people working from home now that all of a sudden think mm. I can have a dog I'm at home all the time mm. um, yeah. give them some company um, mm. A friend of mine uh, recently had his dog recently had puppies and uh, the childbirth was too much for the mother. And um, these puppies, my friend had to hand feed them for weeks and weeks until they were weaned. And there's 14 of them. Goodness. 13 what, survived. What breed was it? Carl? A lurcher. A lurcher. Yeah. Is, it, is it normal for them to have that? that number of puppies i don't know i, I don't know anything about them quite a lot of that isn't it it is it does sound like a lot oh bless yeah. her yeah, yeah. should bless we home them friend. then i don't i don't uh, i saw yesterday he's selling them uh, so if you if you're looking for a lurcher put you in, in contact with him mm. <laughs> are they quite They're big the... dogs then yeah, lurches are. Yeah. But yeah. They, they're quite slender, aren't they? Mm. Mm. Very. And it's interesting, it's not just what, what we get from the animals, it's what the animals get from us as well. Um, the animals' mental health is an important factor as well. I mean, our dog used to be terrified for the first few weeks when we got him he just hid under the table he was absolutely petrified of humans mm-hmm. and now he's completely confident and just doesn't shrugs his shoulders at everything that happens around him mm-hmm. so what about your dogs uh, susan because they're rescue dogs yeah well um sky dog um that was that was the case of um um a friends of ours their daughter was um quite young and in london and thought it would be a good idea to get one of those white fluffy doggies with the pointy ears and the blue eyes um but you know hadn't really researched it hadn't really 
um, taken on board what a responsibility it would actually be. And they weren't spending um, much time in their apartment. It was a second floor apartment. So it was very quickly they knew that they couldn't look after it and it, it, it wasn't a good idea. So um, the parents got in touch with us to see if we would just help out whilst they found someone. <laughs> so it wasn't i mean fortunately he he'd not suffered any mistreatments and it, it he transitioned very quickly and i think um because i believe in this way of uh, how life turns out um we weren't actively looking for a dog um and so he it was just as though he came to us and he's been absolutely perfect for our family in so many ways has provided um us with 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 everything um you know the emotional support the mental support he's always your best friend to go and let off steam on a walk with and tell him your deepest secrets that you wouldn't tell anybody else you know um and uh yeah he has just been such a savior for myself my husband and my two boys you know um he's really part of the family um yeah yeah bit very very big presence in the household but the other one clearly she had had a tough time and uh, and there's still evidence of it now and we're how many months five months down the road and feel as though we've had her a lot longer but um she flinches a lot you know it's just as though round her shoulders round her back um if she's not expecting you to go and pat her or, and, or you know, touch her for whatever reason, then she, um, she reacts. But fortunately, she is so placid. It really, she's so, you know, there isn't a nasty bone in her because you tend to, you can find that a lot when a, a dog has suffered, that it, it, it can be um, aggressive. Uh, towards the human but fortunately it's as though she she knows she's safe and she's being cared for and looked after and she I think she's learning a lot from Sky Dog I think he is um, he puts her in a place he's very tolerant of her but every now and then he'll just go enough <laughs> in doggy language <laughs> funny my wife does the same to me <laughs> what in doggy language yeah <laughs> She just says enough, and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll give up. Well, yeah. I think, um, I mean, you know, we all we all sound quite lucky, but you know, there are. I can think of a few that you know I I know of where they've got like weird little habits of growling at people, and do you know what I mean? And um, you see those on the telly, you know, those like Caesar. Uh, uh, that that behaviourist, he's great. He's like a dog whisperer. And then there's an English guy that, well, he's a Yorkshire guy that's oh. on the telly recently. And oh. um, you know, you get you get pugs that poo everywhere. You get <laughs> itsus that are enjoying teddy bears. And <laughs> there's all sorts. You know, some are like, oh, they've got these really naughty habits, or they bite the other dogs, or you know, because. I guess they all have little behavior issues and if we if we and that's our doing I think that's humans doing yeah, it's definitely. it's things that we you know habits that we have usually out of love because we want to you know we think we're doing a good thing but actually we're creating quite bad habits or we're not having pecking orders mm -hmm. or anything like that I remember when we had Saf it was well she gets fed last um, and this and that and all these little training things so that she goes outside and does a business or whatever and is good on the lead and so there's all little habits that I think that we can all help them with but also that can be quite negative and that we can pass on to them what do you guys think mm, yeah definitely um, in a, agreement with that I think there's a lot of um, 
the relationships between a lot of owners and their their dogs is is almost um considering them like humans you know and they they absolutely are not humans you know and the um yeah to feed them for example food which um is cooked is not natural you know um and uh, and so i i do get a bit um on my soapbox about about uh, just have an awareness that they they are still animals as much as they are domesticated but they they aren't like the human and uh, and that as you mentioned sarah having that pecking order is really important um and actually it's what makes them feel safe so which can seem a bit weird you know to um it's almost like the opposite of how the human thinks but that hierarchy in in the dog world and the cat world is um is really important to honor and and to to maintain so they know their boundaries and that way you do avoid bad behavior and um yeah incidents unexpected incidents I don't think we mean to do it. it we overly love them and sometimes forget that they're dogs and True. not humans um yeah. especially the ones that i've seen on the tv they're all quite naughty because of you know for whatever reason or owners aren't so confident walking them and you know we've got to learn stuff as well i think we yeah. need to be responsible we're looking after them do you know what i mean so yeah although you know i always said our dog was never allowed on our bed <laughs> well <laughs> she was <laughs> started off well but you know so a big dog how on earth did you get on in that bed as well <laughs> oh, i'd often wake up and she'd be spooning me <laughs> i was so naughty and i shouldn't have done but because chris started nights and we were newly married you see that's my fault that's my bad habit that i then created and then she thought, I'm boss of the bed. Do you know what I mean? So, hands up there, that was me. <laughs> Paddy jumps on our bed, tries to stay on the, on the bed for the night, and we're like, ah, off. Yeah. That, that's yeah. the one rule that we don't allow him to do. He's allowed pretty much free, well, he's allowed free reign of the entire house. Not on my bed. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I got shouted at. Why have you let him up? Why have you let her upstairs? I was like, oh, because it's on my own. See, that's my, it was my bad habit, you see. And then for 14 years, oh. <laughs> it was upstairs. Well, I think today we've shown between us that, well, for starters, the three of us love dogs. And cats and hamsters and, and birds. And cats and hamsters, and we've and got fish. an affinity with animals. Um, and in our own little way, they've helped us the past few months yeah. get through what's been a tough time and they've supported us. They're not human, but they're the next best thing. And on that, I think we end the show. So uh, join us uh, next week for another episode, guys. Thank you and goodbye. Bye.